and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you another round of horror book recommendations. I've done several videos in the past giving horror book recommendations. It's been a while since my latest one so I wanted to just give a general update on the horror books that I've read since then and the ones that I would recommend all here together. If you want to check out all the horror books I recommended before I will have the links down below to the previous videos in this series as well as some other related videos like when I recommend short horror books, horror novellas, horror books that I think should be movies, and all of the other ways I've recommended horror books over the years. But today we're just going to be talking about the latest horror books I've read in the last year or so and which ones I think are definitely worth picking up. First up, we have The Fisherman by John Langan. This is a story where you're following these two men who have both lost their wives. While they are both grieving their wives, they have found solace in each other's company and also spending time fishing together. And then one day after hearing rumors about this particular place to go fishing that could remedy their grief, they go out to this place called Dutchman's Creek where there is history of dark packs, long buried secrets, and a mysterious figure known as Dare Fisher, the Fisherman. Going there makes them face all they have lost and what they will do to regain it. If you know me, you know I really love a powerful grief horror story, and this is definitely one of the top ones I've read. This book takes you on such a journey. It took me on an unexpected journey, and there was a lot that I wasn't expecting with how much you get of the history of the story, which was admittedly my least favorite part of the story when you get pulled out of present day to learn all of the history of what's gone on. But this is a book that I thought about long after I've read it. It has such an interesting story to tell, and I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of grief horror. Next up we have The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. This is a little bit different from what I typically read. This ends up taking a sci-fi sort of twist into the story, which is evident in the way the synopsis is written out, so I don't feel like that's a spoiler in any way. It's written as more of a literary horror book, and it is longer, so it is a little bit more of a commitment, but if you really want to get absorbed in a story, this is one that I just got fully immersed in when I was reading this one. You're following this family who's returning back to their hometown with their teenage son. When the mom and dad both lived there before, they both had a difficult time growing up in different ways. The father had an abusive father who has recently just died and that's the house they're moving back into so he's confronted with the trauma that he faced in that difficult abusive home. And then the mother had weird things going on when she was a kid. She was making these weird sculptures and she doesn't even really fully remember or know how to make sense of what went on in her childhood. And now when they're returning to this hometown, things that happened in the past are starting to happen again and starting to affect their teenage son. And he gets pulled into all of this and it becomes this huge thing that's going on. It has a really interesting direction that the story takes. And I just had a lot of fun with this one. It is the perfect one to read in the fall if you're still looking to add to your fall TBR. Definitely recommend picking this one up. Next we have The Last House on Needle Street by Katrina Ward. I will also have another book of hers that I recommend later in the video. She writes these books that are sort of a blend between thriller and horror. I don't feel like it fully sits on either side of the spectrum of being a full thriller or a full horror. I feel like it's a nice blend of both. This story is best to go in knowing as little about it as possible because the way the story just comes together as you're reading it is such a fun journey. I truly had no idea what I was reading when I started reading the first couple chapters of this book, trying to understand why are we getting the perspective of a cat? Who is this man that I'm following? Who is this young girl that I'm following? How are they all pieced together? And that is exactly what makes this book so much fun to read. Essentially, you're following the story of this man who lives in this house on Needless Street with a young girl and a cat who can talk who is also obsessed with the Bible and religion and that is all you need to know. Just go into the story expecting a really interesting journey with it and you'll probably have a lot of fun. The other book that I have to recommend by Katrina Ward is Sundial. This one came out more recently and this is a story about this woman who is taking her daughter back to her hometown area which is called Sundial out in the desert to get away from her other daughter because she's worried that the daughter that she's taking away is going to harm the other daughter. So she's taking her, they're gonna have a little come to Jesus moment and she's gonna figure out what's going on with their daughter. But once they get to Sundial, the tension in the air is high and it seems like there's some planning going on and someone might not make it out of Sundial alive. I feel like if you liked one of those books, you're probably gonna like the other because her style is just pretty distinct. They are completely different stories, but I really enjoyed both of them. I actually enjoyed Sundial even more than The Last House on Neely Street, but I do recommend both. Next up, we have This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. This is another grief horror that leans into cosmic horror as well, which is going to be a theme that you see through here. I really do like grief horror and cosmic horror. I don't fully know if I love it yet, but I do appreciate it for sure. In the story, you're following this man whose wife has recently passed and the way she passed was this spectacle. So he decides he wants to get away and just go off 
into the woods somewhere where people will just leave him alone and he doesn't have to hear all of these empty lamentations for his wife's loss and hear about talk on the media. He just wants to go be on his own, but he learns that he can't run away from it all. Another important part of the story is that before his wife died, they ended up buying this device that is sort of like an Alexa device where you can talk to it, it talks back, you can ask it to order things for you. In this world, it's called ITSA. That's what the device is called. It was sending them weird things, weird things were going on with the ITSA, and that also becomes an important part of the story. I love the first half of the story. The second half did get a little bit confusing for me, but I just thought it was such a fun ride. It's definitely one of those books I would want to reread again just to piece it all back together. I really, really love the writing in this one. The tone was just so well done to really portray grief in a horror novel. And I think this was Gus Moreno's debut novel. Not totally sure, but I think it was. And I definitely want to read more from him in the future. Next up, we have Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. This is another grief story. This is a novella that I absolutely fell in love with. It is one of my favorite horror novellas, if not my most favorite horror novella I have ever read. In the story of following a woman whose son has passed and she frequently goes and visits the site of his death. He died in a car accident. And then one day she sheds blood on his death site. And after that, she starts to believe that she sees him, like sees his ghost coming back. She wonders if she does it again and she'll be able to see him again. And then she just gets caught up in this horrifying tale of grief. This one's very intense, lots of body horror in here, very heavy, very sad, but very effective horror. I absolutely love this and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I also would recommend Below by Laurel Hightower, which is a novella that I read more recently. This one's very different. This is more of a survival cosmic horror novella where you're following this woman who is driving in the night in West Virginia in a snowstorm. She ends up encountering another man when she gets kind of caught up in the snowstorm and they're driving together for a while and then something terrible happens and then she gets put in this position where she has to decide if she's willing to help a stranger or if she wants to protect herself more and oh yeah there's the mothman in this and some other creatures of the night and it is so creepy and a little bit confusing but a fun journey nonetheless. I actually read this entire novella on a live show when I did my 24-hour horror-a-thon readathon for the very first time so you can check that out if you wanted to see my reading experience with this one but so far I found that you cannot go wrong with Laurel High Tower, so definitely an author to watch. Next up, we have a book that I didn't particularly love, but since reading it, I do find myself thinking about it and I wonder if I should give it another shot or if I just wanna to try to find something like this in the future. And that is String Follow by Simon Jacobs. This is a story that is set in this small town in the small suburbs of Ohio. I believe it's set in either the 80s or the 90s. And you're following this group of teenage kids and there's this evil dark force lurking in the town that starts to affect the kids. It's written in a really interesting way it's a super interesting story but I just didn't have the most enjoyable experience with it but again ever since reading it I've always kind of thought back on it like should I give that another try Did, would I appreciate that on a second read knowing what to expect because I just felt like it was a little bit slow and a little too densely written the first time around reading it but I don't know I do find myself thinking about this one so if this story sounds interesting to you I would say it's probably worth picking it up and giving it a try I've never read from this author before but it looks like they have a couple other novels and short fiction things so maybe I would try something else from him in the future but if you're looking for some kind of like evil dark force following teen kids type of story this one definitely does that. Next up we have The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. This is a short horror novella that is about this side psychologist, psychiatrist, someone who works in the mental health profession who is going to work at this mental health facility for these patients. I don't know if asylum is the correct word for that anymore, but I believe that's what they call it in the story. I don't own a physical copy. I read this one all in ebook, so I can't check. But anyways, you're following this professional who's going to work with these people who are in this facility and they all have mental health illnesses going on as well. And there was this one particular patient who is notorious in the facility. Everyone's afraid to work with him because anyone who's ever worked with him ends up dying and killing themselves and there's all this mystery around what he's doing is he evil what's going on with him why can no one figure out what his diagnosis is or how to help and the professional that you're following who's coming in thinks that he's going to finally be the one to diagnose this patient to fix him and i'm sure you can guess by this being a horror thriller type book that that does not go so well this is a fast and fun psychological horror thriller type read i think i remember hearing before reading this one that it was so scary 
scary and it could mess with your mind. I didn't personally have that experience with it, but I did think it was pretty good. So I do recommend it. Next up, we have some of the latest Eric LaRocca books. I really, really enjoyed Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. I have previously recommended that one, I'm sure, in an earlier video in this series, but I would also recommend You've Lost A Lot Of Blood. And for the right audience, we can never leave this place. You've Lost A Lot Of Blood. I personally ended up enjoying this one more. It's a little bit difficult to try to pitch Eric LaRocca's books because the synopses are always so vague for them. You don't really know what you're getting yourself into. And I end up being so fine with that because I always have fun with these stories. Eric LaRocca's writing is just so good and so grotesque and so interesting and fresh and unique every time. The blurb for this one is each precious thing I show you in this book is a holy relic from the night we both perished. The night when I combed you from my hair and watered the moon with your blood. You've lost a lot of blood. And then we can never leave this place. This one actually has a little bit more of a drawn out synopsis. It says a precocious young girl with an unusual imagination is sent on an odyssey into the depths of depravity. After her father dies violently, young Mara is surprised to find her mother welcoming a new guest into their home, claiming that he will protect them from the world of devastation and destruction outside their door. So this one is sort of a blend of dark fantasy and horror, and it's just really, really weird. <laughs> I describe this one as more of an experience. I would not start with this one with Eric LaRocca's works. I would probably start with Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. Then I would pick up You've Lost A Lot Of Blood. And if you like the writing style, this one I think you'll appreciate as well. I didn't fully know what was going on in this book, but I didn't need to. I had a good time. So I recommend it. <laughs> Next we have Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This is a story about this woman who is going back to her childhood home to take care of her dying mother. She doesn't really want to, but her mom calls her. She decides to come. They have a fraught relationship and that dynamic is just really interesting to watch play out in the story. The house is also sort of crumbling around them, which creates this really dark gothic atmosphere to the story. And oh yeah, her dad was a serial killer. So she's got that hanging over the house as well and you're following what happens while she is back there with her mother living with her until the end of her life. There's also an artist who's living at the house because the mom allows young artists to come live at the house to get some sort of inspiration from being in such a dark place. That becomes a part of the story and then the main character starts finding these notes that were written in her father's handwriting and she's trying to piece together what's going on around her. The writing in this one is incredible. It is such love lush prose. It is so grotesque. Every metaphor is just so beautiful. The writing is truly wonderful. The ending of this one wasn't my absolute favorite, but the experience with the book as a whole I did enjoy. And I would recommend if you're someone who appreciates a more slow, quiet horror novel where not a lot really happens, but it just builds a really great atmosphere. Next up, I wanted to talk about one of the books that I read when I did a video reading and disturbing horror books that I saw recommended on TikTok. The book I want to talk about is Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. This book is disturbing with a capital D and capital letters all throughout. It is a disturbing horror book. I do not recommend this lightly and I really don't recommend it at all ever really but I will say the writing in it was so good. I really enjoyed this one and I ended up giving it a four star rating but it is the definition of depravity. And so I just like to be so careful when I talk about this book, I don't want this the average reader to pick it up thinking it's an intro to horror or a typical horror, or a typical thriller. This is disturbing, very disturbing. So please proceed with caution on this one. But I did think it was worth mentioning because I did really enjoy the writing and I do want to read more from this author because the writing was just so engrossing. I was just so pulled into the story. The characters were developed so well. I feel like it's kind of hard to describe what this one's about because it sets itself up and that's sort of all the story is. But you're pretty much following the story of these two guys who are both evil, evil people who end up meeting and committing evil deeds together. But it's a really slow story and it takes a while to build to that. So don't expect that to happen in the first 10 pages and then the story goes on from there. Like it, it builds to all of that and that is what the story is. But again, 
don't pick it up if you don't want to read something very deserving. <laughs> Next up, we have Mary, An Awakening of Terror by Nat Cassidy. This is a story that was inspired by Carrie. And the way the author pitches it, I believe, is if Carrie grew up without powers, this is what would happen to her. You're following this woman named Mary, who is approaching 50 years old, and she starts having all these symptoms that seem like they could be related to menopause. And she's seeing doctors and trying to figure out what's going on with her. But she's having things go on that seem like a step beyond menopause pause like when she sees other women she sees them like crumbling before her when she sees her face in a mirror she sees her crumbling before her and there's just a lot of weird things going on in Mary's life that seem like it might be a little bit more than menopause and then her aunt ends up calling her and says I'm dying please come take care of me similar to just like home by Sarah Gailey how that ends up happening as well and Mary ends up going to take care of her dying aunt back in this town and she starts to piece together her history things that she's remembering about the town, about herself, and it's just an adventure from there. <laughs> this is a pretty long book. It ended up being a little bit over 400 pages. I do think it was a little bit too long. It does feel a little long, at least in my opinion, it felt a little long while reading it, but it is worth reading. The character work is just really, really good in this one. I really enjoyed Nat Cassidy's writing style. I really enjoyed the way he developed Mary as a character, even if you don't like her. I feel like she has just developed really well, developed enough to make you not like her. Aunt Nadine in this one is such a character. There's so many interesting things going on in this one, and it has some ambiguous parts to it as well, and it ended up being a pretty enjoyable time to read even if I ended up not fully getting it or fully piecing the ending together this is certainly an author that I will want to be reading from again Next up, we have Daphne by Josh Mallerman. This is a story about this girl named Kit Lamb, who is a senior in high school. She is playing on her basketball team. She has a lot of anxiety. She also has a lot of anxiety that the town's ghost named Daphne is going to come kill her and all her friends. This is only the second thing I've read from Josh Mallerman, but I'm starting to sense his writing style a bit from what I've read from him. And I really think this is going to be an author I really enjoy. He has this style of writing this psychological literary horror, building characters so well, creating a slow burn atmosphere that isn't boring to read at least it's not boring to me but it feels like it should be boring but it's not boring and I really just love what this book did with building the metaphor of this town ghost Daphne and the way that she works as a ghost is the more you think about her the more likely she is to appear and come kill you and that's built as this metaphor around Kit's anxiety and just anxiety in general. Josh Mallerman himself talks in the ending about his own experience with anxiety and also his own experience with basketball and why that ended up being a part of the story but you can just tell this was a personal story for him. I think it was done super well and I had a really good time with it. Next up we have Anybody Home by Michael J. Sedlinger. I read this one very recently. It just recently came out and this is a very interesting story that is told from the perspective of a seasoned home invader who is telling you how to go about executing your own perfect home invasion. So you're following the story written in second person as you are invading someone's home with a group of other people and it is brutal. It is very brutal. There's a lot of brutal things in here so proceed with caution. I will say the beginning half of this book took me quite some time to get into. The writing style was unusual. I wasn't getting fully absorbed in the story. But the second half, I was fully in for the ride and it was a very interesting story. And it has a really interesting commentary around it as well that I can't really talk about because I feel like that would be spoilery. But what the author did here was pretty interesting, pretty unique. And if home invasion horror is something you find yourself interested in reading about, this is one that I would recommend picking up. And then I also wanted to recommend finally When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen. I actually just read this one last week. I haven't even talked about it in a wrap up yet, but because it was so good, I did want to go ahead and lump it into this recommendation video instead of waiting another six months or however long it takes for me to do another one of these. This was just some of the best atmospheric lush writing I have read in a while. The author really paints such a vivid picture of the story, the tone of it, and it is just done so well. In this story, you're following a woman who is is going to her old friend's wedding. Um, she is a black woman, which is important to note because her friend is a white woman who is having a wedding at a plantation. She's hesitant, obviously, to go, but then she ends up being convinced to go because another one of their core friends, who is a black man, is also attending and they had a falling out and she wants to reconnect with him there. Back when they were close friends, they ended up visiting this area, her and the guy, and some weird things happened. They both had sort of different experiences and it didn't end up going well for them. 
uh, what ended up happening there and she feels a lot of guilt over what happened then also a lot of confusion still over what happened then and so she really just wants to reconnect with him so they decide to attend this wedding and then while they're there over the course of the weekend they're there for the wedding history comes back to slap them in the face I feel like it's just the best way to describe it the writing in this one was just absolutely stunning, absolutely horrifying. Really, really recommend this one. So spoiler alert for my wrap up, <laughs> you'll know that I really enjoyed it, but I did want to squeeze this one into the video as well. So that is it for my latest list of horror book recommendations. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these and what you think, and let me know if you have any additional recommendations that you haven't heard me talk about that you think I will enjoy as well, so I can check those out and maybe they'll make it onto my next round of horror book recommendations. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!